It's day 19 of the 31 day safer pilot challenge. And today we're going to make holding patterns easier. Target, power back, head reason flat, perfect landing, still start the perfect pattern. What is happening, M Zero Nation? Jason Schabert here, day 19. The finish line is almost in sight. Who is 19 for 19 on this year's 31 day safer pilot challenge? I'm so impressed by so many of you keeping up and by those of you who are catching up as well, right? It's okay to fall behind weekends and all that, I get it. There's always some homework to do. There's always more to learn. Speaking of learning more, if you're loving this, please don't forget about us. When it comes time for your written test prep, your check ride prep for making that safe real world pilot, m0atrial.com to take a free two week trial of all our online ground school courses. And one of those topics we talk about inside the instrument online ground school is this, it's IFR holding patterns. Can I share with you a secret in my 20 years of flying, uh, I had to think about that for a second. It's been 20 years of flying. Uh, I have done one real IFR hold in my life. It was actually on my way to Oshkosh 2023 uh, where it was truly IFR and we had to hold for a Challenger jet. Every other holding pattern I've gotten, I've asked for or I won the published mist or, or whatever it may be. I'm talking a hold that I didn't plan on uh, doing, what didn't ask for, I was told to put in a hold and given traditional holding instructions. Now, that's secret number one, that holds in general aviation as we typically fly, as you progress to the airlines, you'll be putting a lot more holds into corporate uh, part 135 or even 91K, whatever it may be, you're gonna do some more holds, um, that's for sure, but just flying 172 around, it doesn't happen uh, all that often. Here's the other secret. We're gonna talk about all these different types of holding pattern entries today. And if I had to guess, if you gave me 10 air traffic controllers in a lineup, and this is not picking on controllers, this is just the data. If you gave me 10 aircraft controllers lined up and I asked all 10 of them, what are the three types of IFR holding pattern entries? How many of those 10 controllers do you think could name all three? If I had to put it in the comments, if I had to guess, I would say half, I'd say five out of 10 would be, would be a safe guess for that. Because here's another truth. Controllers don't care how you get into the hold. What they do care about is, do you stay on the protected side and do you follow their appropriate holding instructions? You know, time, uh, distance, correct direction of turns, all of that sort of stuff. That's what they really focus on. That's what they really care about. The, the controller's not gonna say, you know what, two, three, Mike Zulu, you made a parallel entry there, but you should have made a teardrop entry. I don't think you're gonna find a controller that's gonna say that. Before we get into all that though, let's teach a little bit about holds, then we'll practice some radio calls and we'll practice some actual entries. I'll show exactly how I do it. So the truth about holds is, well, did you know a standard hold is to the right? So in VFR, standard traffic is to the left. In IFR, a hold is to the right. That's just what the FAA does sometimes. Standard holds are to the right. There's two types of holds. They're time and distance holds. Time starts over and a beam you're fixed, but your main goal of that time is for that inbound leg to equal that minute, those two minutes, whatever that actually may be. Um, remember, it's 200 knots max in a hold, and above 14,000 feet, it's 265 for turbo jet aircraft. I know you're not gonna have a problem with those speeds in your 172, but it's just something to keep in mind. Now, I mentioned there's three types of holding pattern entries. Add these to your notes, maybe you know them. They're direct, teardrop, and parallel. When would you do one over another? Well, if we were to divide up our hold, like you see on your screen here, uh, the area to the right, you would see that is a direct entry. Meaning if I'm approaching anywhere from, in this case, the green area here, I would make a direct entry. I'd fly right to my fix. In this case, it looks like a VOR and I would begin my right racetrack pattern. Next, uh, my next largest space, oddly enough, is a parallel entry. If I'm approaching from anywhere in this space up here, I would fly to my fix. Again, in this case, a VOR. I would fly 
opposite my inbound course. I'd fly my inbound course outbound. I'd parallel it is what we're suggesting here and saying, and then I would make a turn back around again into the inbound course and start my hold. Lastly, the smallest space is for a teardrop entry. Approaching from this side of the hold, I would fly past my course, all within that protected side. I'd make a right teardrop back around and I would enter into my hold from there. Thus, the teardrop entry. Now, let's be honest. I know when I explain it that way, you go, okay, that makes sense. It's very different. Who knows what I mean when I say it's very different when you've got the foggles on or the hood on, you're hurtling through the sky at 90 knots, and ATC or your instructor gives you a hold and you go, uh, direct, right? And that may or may not be correct. It's easy to see it here. It's hard to see it in the airplane. So let me show you how I demonstrate it in the airplane. I use my compass. Whether you're on a G1000 or whether you're flying a regular old steam gauge, it doesn't matter use my heading indicator in this case to actually help determine it. So let's say like our heading indicator shows here, we are truly on a north heading. We are north um, flying. And you hear, to their Mike Zulu, hold southwest of the Ocala VOR on the 210 radial. Maintain 6,000, expect further clearance in two zero minutes. Okay, I'm to hold southwest of the Ocala VOR on the 210 radial. Let's just focus on that for now. Altitude, expect further clearance. We can understand that later. Here's how I do it. If this is truly my heading indicator and I am currently flying on a north heading, I take my fix, in this case, the Ocala VOR, and I slap it right down in the middle. I then need to determine where is my 210 radial? My 210 radial, where is that actually at? Well, it's right there. Now remember, a radial radiates out from the VOR. So my 210 radial, as you see here. Now, I'm to hold southwest, okay, that is southwest, that's right, of the Ocala VOR on the 210 radial. Which way, how would I draw my hold from here? Well, remember, we make right racetrack patterns. So that 210 radial, I realize your inbound course is actually the reciprocal, because we're making right turns, of a 030, but you're physically holding on the 210 radial. Radials radiate out from the VOR. I realize your heading inbound will be a 030, but you're still on the 210 radial. Do you follow me? If not, let's do another one. Um, oh, by the way, what kind of entry would that have been? If maybe we could show that again. If you're truly on a north heading, what kind of entry would you make? You'd make a direct entry, right? You would just fly right to that VOR and start your turns around. Let's do another one here uh, quickly. Same thing, uh, we're on a north heading. Skyhawk 2 Mike Zulu hold northeast of the Ocala VOR on the 030 radial. Maintain 6,000, expect further clearance to zero minutes. All right, same thing slap my VOR right down in the middle of my heading indicator. Where's my 030 radial? Radials radiate out. My 030. Okay, now I need to draw that right racetrack pattern. Where am I gonna draw it? Well, I'm gonna draw it right there. I put the arrows in there for you too so you can see that. Now, what type of entry would you make if you're approaching the hold from this direction? Now that you can visualize it here. If you said teardrop, I'd say teardrop is probably the easiest one to make. If you said parallel, well, you're not wrong either. This one's kind of on the borderline a little bit. Here's my rule of thumb. For me, a teardrop is always the easiest to make. Uh, it's just one less turn than a parallel. A teardrop is one less turn, and if I'm truly in IFR conditions, less turns is better. I'd fly right onto it. I'd fly through and past and I would teardrop back around and in. Let's do one more. Two, three, Mike Zulu, hold northwest the Ocala VOR on the 330 radial, maintain 6,000, expect further clearance in two zero minutes. Now you work through this one, right? I'm on a north heading. Step one's what? Put the VOR in the middle. Step two, locate 330. Draw my 330 to uh, my, my fix in this case put my right racetrack pattern over it. Can you see why this one now is a better example of a parallel entry? You couldn't really teardrop this one. It's a little dramatic for a teardrop. This is a textbook parallel entry, meaning what? 
meaning I'd fly to my VOR. I would then parallel my course out. That was turn one, by the way. And here comes turn two. And then turn three is where I line myself back up. A lot of turns there for the parallel entry. But this is very much a textbook parallel entry. So are IFR holding patterns just a little bit easier for you right now? I hope they are. And if you are only a private pilot, I hope you just hung tight and still learn because maybe you aspire to be an instrument pilot here one day. This all benefits you. In fact, if you're just a private pilot, you say, I don't even want to do my instrument one day, Jason. There was a hidden message in all of this. It's knowing your relation to the station. And it's not just a cute rhyme. That, that's a great way to understand where am I in relation to the VOR, the station, the fix. Where am I in relation to the station? You can use your heading indicator, assuming you've set it up appropriately to match your magnetic compass to do the exact same thing. Well, what'd you think of day 19 of the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge? Hopefully you've been getting some little nuggets of wisdom along the way. Start to kind of keep in mind what some of your favorites are. I'll be asking you on day 31, we're doing a big live stream uh, all together in the evening. Uh, I'll be asking you all what are some of your favorite days. So. Looking forward to seeing your responses on that. Listen, thank you so much for your comments. Check in down below, 19 for 19. You officially did it on the day 20 tomorrow. Until then, have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning every day, everybody. I'll see you.